And welcome to Ott and Math. In this edition of Ott and Math, we're going to talk about uh, how the Pythagorean theorem relates to space figures. So what we need to do is to give you an introduction to space figures, and ultimately we're going to start talking about volume and area in uh, 3D figures as well. So you want to pay attention because this will come back in a couple later sections. All right, so let's talk about a rectangular solid. A rectangular solid is a three-dimensional figure, and uh, I have four sides around the rectangular solid and then a base, uh, two bases here on the top and the bottom. These are faces of the uh, rectangular solid. A diagonal goes from one corner of the rectangular solid all the way to the opposite corner across the rectangular solid, so from H to B. I also have a diagonal from E to C and I have a diagonal from G to A, and then I have a diagonal from this point here, which is unlabeled to F. An edge is a length of the rectangular solid. So AB is an edge, AE is an edge, EF is an edge, FG is an edge. Now I also have face diagonals, and there are actually 12 edges, by the way, and there are six faces, so one, two, three, four around the side, and then the two bases, uh, top and bottom. Those are two faces. I have face diagonals. So a face diagonal is going to be a diagonal across the surface of the face of the rectangular solid. So just like I have uh, six faces, I also have fi six face diagonals. And I have four diagonals. So HG again, GA, uh, EC, and this point here to F. My face diagonals are going to be, uh, excuse me, I'm going to have uh, at least one like that. I'm going to have. Uh, excuse me, 12 face diagonals. I have EB, I have AF, that's one. I have HA, I have E to this point, that's four. HC, G to the point, that's uh, six. FC, GB is going to be eight. The point to B is another face diagonal. AC, that's 10. Then HF and EG complete the 12 face diagonals. All right, so I have four diagonals, 12 face diagonals, 12 edges, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Uh, six faces, and I think that covers it. So rectangular solid, there are a lot of different components on it. Now a cube is gonna be a rectangular solid in which all the edges are gonna be congruent in length. So just as a heads up in terms of definition. All right, so let me give you a little quick quiz here. What is the relationship between the opposite faces of a rectangular solid? What is the relationship between the four diagonals of a solid? What is the relationship between the opposite edges of a rectangular solid? All right, so the answer to uh, question number one, what's the relationship between the opposite faces of a re rectangular solid? Well, they're gonna be congruent and they're gonna be parallel. All right, so opposite faces of a rectangular solid, I have an, one face here, F, G, C, B, the opposite face is going to be EH, we'll say this is L, LA. Those opposite faces of a rectangular solid are going to be parallel and congruent. Right, what is the relationship between the four diagonals of a solid? Well, they're not going to be uh, parallel, but they are going to be congruent. All right, so we go back to our diagram. I have HB, AG, EC, and GA, uh, and then I also have LF, and I can't remember which ones I missed. But uh, the diagonals, uh, in this case, I have H, G, E, F, uh, G, A, and E, C. Those diagonals are going to be congruent. Okay, finally, what is the relationship between the opposite edges? And let you think about it for a second. And I'll bring you back to the diagram. So the opposite edges, so I have an edge A, B, opposite edge L, C. Opposite edges are going to be congruent and parallel. Right, so a uh, relationship between opposite faces, they're congruent and parallel. Diagonals are going to be congruent but not parallel. And then the opposite edges are going to be congruent and parallel. All right, so now we're going to talk about a pyramid. In this case, I have a base of the pyramid. I have the vertex. I have the altitude, which is the distance uh, from the vertex to the base that makes a right angle with the base. I have the slant height, which is 
the height of the length that stems from the vertex down to an edge of the base that makes a right angle with the base. So here I have a right angle. Slant height is that distance from the vertex to an edge of the base that makes a right angle with the base. And then I just have an edge. So vertex, and I'm going to put edge here. So vertex, base, uh, a face of the pyramid, an edge, and the slant height. Right, so in review, there are a couple of figures you'll need to know in detail uh, for this chapter. I have a rectangular solid, uh, and a cube can be defined as a rectangular solid in which all edges are congruent. I have face diagonals that run across the face. I have edges. I have 12 edges. I have six faces, four around the side, two top and bottom of the bases. I have diagonals. I have four diagonals that are true diagonals, and 12 diagonals that are face diagonals. Then I have my pyramid. I have uh, an edge or a lateral edge in this case. I have a base. The vertex is the point where all the lateral edges meet. Uh, I have the slant height, which is the distance from the vertex to an edge of the base that is perpendicular to the edge of the base. Uh, then I have the altitude, which is uh, the length from the vertex to the base that makes the uh, a right angle with the base. When I think about some of the details of the rectangular solid, I know the opposite faces of a rectangular solid are going to be congruent and parallel. Uh, four diagonals of the solid are going to be congruent, and the opposite edges are going to be congruent and parallel. All right, that's it for Otten Math and Space Figures, the Pythagorean Theorem. We're going to use that information in just a second when we take on some practice problems.